it's helpful to think about trying to prevent the person you're caring for from becoming too stressed. Stress will often undermine their ability to cope. People with dementia take longer to understand what's happening around them and this often leads to a feeling of pressure, so take your time. It's obviously best to try and maintain peaceful surroundings as excessive noise can be confusing and can cause agitation in itself. And if possible, don't attempt to undertake something you know will cause agitation if they are tired. Pick a time when they appear to be in a good mood. Remember, all stress-reducing techniques need to be tailored to the individual and to the stage of their illness. What sort of adjustments do carers have to make? Well, certainly um, maintaining a calm, reassuring approach is important and speaking slowly and clearly uh, and also using a person's name is often very helpful. Um, and tone is probably as important as what you actually say. Um, making eye contact and the appropriate use of touch is also beneficial. I think we should try to keep instructions simple and definitely avoid quizzing or arguing with the person. And try to av uh, avoid the word no if possible and endeavour to guide and gently encourage the person. Anything else you might consider? Well, close questions where the answer is either yes or no often helps reduce stress for the person you are caring for. For example, do you want this shirt today rather than which shirt would you like to wear today? It can reduce the stress of having to make too many choices for the individual, which may be difficult but it still gives the person a sense of some choice and control. When Don's lucid, we can have a good conversation. It doesn't last very long, but he seems to go right back in the past. I've had to lower my voice and talk to him in a softer type of voice. Otherwise, I get accused of telling him off. I find that the easiest way is to try... She's not got much of a conversation, except very occasionally she'll come quite lucid and it's just like the relationship used to be. Uh, other times, uh, you know, she's living in a different world altogether. Uh, and I find then uh, uh, just a few words and very simple words, you know, is suffice. And I can usually get a, 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 a reasonable answer from her. But other times, no. What sort of adjustments do carers have to make? Well, I think carers certainly may have to adjust their expectations of what an individual can do and perhaps concentrate on the most important care tasks. Um, for example, if shaving causes agitation, it might be preferable for an easily trimmed beard to be grown. Or, for example, if dressing and undressing causes distress, um, they could try clothes which can be easily put on and taken off. Agitation may be helped by distraction with a conversation that the person can be a part of, and perhaps playing some of their favourite music may be calming. However, if the problem persists despite your best efforts, I would always suggest stopping what you're doing and try again later. I now step back sometimes and just leave things. If it's nothing life-threatening and my father is happy, I don't interfere, I just leave it. So that's helped me to cope, really. A person in the early stage of dementia may respond well to careful orientation. For example, reassuring them if they are disorientated about whether they are at home or not and repeating this if necessary. Yeah. Where are we now? In here? Yeah. Where do we live though? <laughs> Clever. You You're can't. trying to trick me. Where do we live? I don't know, don't you? Don't you? However, this may not work well with a person with more severe impairment, and an alternative approach would be to concentrate on more emotional support using distraction and less factual information. Carers often find taking a break useful. Depending on availability in your area, this may be having a sitter for a period during the day or overnight. The sufferer going to a day centre or even on a short break away from home for specialist respite. Don't let yourself get too run down. 
You need to look after yourself as much as the person you are caring for. Mind you, I can go off and leave him for a couple of hours. Do manage to get out to in an afternoon, just locally, to have a game of bowls. I wouldn't go off for any length of time uh, on away matches and things like that, but just to go down to Carey Park, have a game of bowls, get some fresh air, talk to people, that's a big help. Cause it just gives you a couple of hours break, really. Um, and in an evening, once a week, I, I do go and play bridge. So that gives me a break twi twice a week doing something different. I cry sometimes, but I mainly, I will treat myself to something. <laughs> I'll get a DVD and a large <clears throat> glass of wine and say, I'm not answering the telephone. <laughs> it can wait. And it's just two hours, but it's time for yourself and it's like a little reward really um, we did actually book a whole two week holiday abroad once because we were so so fed up with it all So, but I think the other thing from a positive angle is it's made us my husband and I reevaluate our lives because we can look now and think this could be our future and it, so it gives you a chance to reevaluate, and that's been a very positive thing. Use the techniques discussed to help reduce stress. Try to remain calm and take your time. Think about how you're approaching the sufferer. Keep your expectations realistic and most importantly of all, look after yourself.